Hello everyone, welcome to this new video in which we're going to tackle a challenge named relativity. It's not Einstein theory of relativity, but it's a CTF. Let's get started. Okay, the environment is being provisioned and we have our attacking machine ready to strike. Give it some time to start the machine. I'm using RootMe and I talk about this website a lot. In my course from zero to signing your first ethical hacker job which is a practical roadmap if you want to become a penetration tester it doesn't focus just on the technical stuff but the objective of the course is to get you that penetration testing job that you so always wanted okay our host name is ctf21.rootme.org let's start port scanning and map we want to start with top ports, like 200 ports. That would give us a strong start. We want verbose mode, and this is our host. I may want to also add a version scan, and I'm going to redirect errors to dev null and give it a try. Let's see what we get. So it's found 22, 21, 80. 22 means SSH, hopefully. 21 FTP and 80, which is just a web server. Um, let's start with the web server. Okay, it's already finished. Anyway, so we have FTP Pro FTPD with this version, open SSH, and as we guessed it, port 80 maps to a web server. Okay. Let's start with the web server. So that would be CTF21. And we're presented with a image. Okay, if we open it in a new tab, it's hosted on the root. Its name is artwork.jpg. I wonder if we could extract anything from it. I'm going to just uh, make a folder here, cd into it. This is where we are going to store our files and use exif tool to, do I have exif, no, if I could type exif tool, I don't have exif tool, okay. Let's install it then. Okay, let's try once more. Exif tool and artwork. Enter. And we don't seem to find anything interesting here. Dummy comment here. Okay, I've used Fuff in the previous, or WFuzz, in, I don't recall, in previous challenges. Let's change things a bit and try Burp Suit instead. You can also use Zap, Z Attack Proxy. The downside of Burp Suit is that you need the professional version if you want to perform directory burp forcing without being throttled. So let's point our web browser to our proxy and repeat the request and then turn it off. What we really want, wanted here was to grab the request to CTF 20 something, which I don't see here, by the way. Oh. I think it's because by default binary images and binary files aren't shown in burp so using just tweaking in the filter we can show all and apply and normally we get our image here okay let's send this to the intruder and let's just turn it Foxy proxy off for now. And let's go to the intruder. 
clear everything and target this part here because this is where we're going to brute force. And I'm going to use a simple list and add from a list of directories and choose short. This is just to see if there is something common as a directory in the web browser. In the web server, we don't want to URL encode them. And let's just start the attack. You see that we have a total of 372 payloads. And if we're lucky, we should get something in the status column, which we we don't have anything. Okay. So generally with this kind of uh, CTFs, if you don't find something using common word lists, then maybe that's not the way to go. So I'm going to shut down Burp Suit for now. And uh, let's see what are the other services we want to probe. So let's see if we can find something related to pro TFTPD or pro FTPD with this exact version. We can use exploit DB for that matter. So that would be exploit DB and then just paste in your exact version and see what we get. So here we have something that's targeting the right version we are after. There's also a Metasploit module, uh, ASCII file remote code execution, but this is not, uh, I guess, the right version here. 1.2.9, yeah, it could work. Let's open it in a new tab and what else? Okay, let's see what we have here. Pro FTPD 1.2.8 file transfer buffer overrun. This is a remotely exploitable buffer overrun vulnerability that has been reported. This issue could be triggered if an attacker uploads a malformed file and then that file is downloaded in ASCII mode. Okay, I think that would require authentication. So yeah, it's requiring login and the password and the IP address. I wonder if we could authenticate anonymously to the FTP server. Well, let's try it. FTP. And then the host name, which I don't seem to remember. CTF21. And we have a prompt, meaning that uh, there is a, a FTP server running. And the name could be anonymous. So that's the uh, username if the FTP is using anonymous authentication and the password could be anything. But we have login incorrect, which means that it's not supported. So this exploit wouldn't work for us. What about this one? S replace buffer overflow. Okay. This module exploits a stack based buffer overflow. If you don't know what a buffer overflow means, you can check out my previous challenge about um, uh, brain pen. So you can just Google that or maybe I'll put a card in the top corner to click on it where I go through an exploitation of a, a basic buffer overflow. Okay, so the vulnerability within the S replace function mm -mm -mm. did not work. Actually, it exists. We were unable to reach S replace stack on Pro FTP 1.2.10 which means that it would be the case for 1.2.8 probably. 
because it says here the version 1.3.0 introduced some interesting changes and among them one integer overflow in S replace. So I wonder if this is the right one to go with since we're not sure if it would really work in our case. And generally with these kind of exploits, if the memory is corrupted, then it would potentially uh, crash the service and then we wouldn't have access to the FTP service anymore. So I'm kind of hesitant to try this one. There are two bugs we are able to reach. Okay. Does, does, it, re does it need authentication? We can check. Well, we can go to the source code and see for ourselves. Okay, let's find the uh, function named exploit. Yep, def exploit. So it tries to connect, connect login. So this would probably mean that we need some kind of authentication. What is this connect login? I'm just going to look for this special function in Metasploit to see what it means. FTP connect login. Okay. So this function connects and login to the remote FTP using the credentials that have been supplied in the exploit options. Okay. So this suggests that this exploit actually requires authentication to actually be able to run those commands, you know, CWD and PWD, etc. So I guess because of these reasons, this exploit wouldn't work either. And this ASCII one, I guess, is the same as this one. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, nope, so we can check it out. Remote root exploit, okay. Exploits. Ski, which return address. Do we need any authentication for this exploit to work? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, user pass. Yes. So. It's trying to do some kind of login here, login FTP, which is, where is this defined? Read buff, client connect, check status. Yep, I guess this is, yeah. So get the login FTP function, tries to send the user and then it, sh it sends pass str, which is pass space, the password that we provided it with. So yeah, this also requires authentication, which we don't have. What is the third service here? 22. So SSH may be with the root user or rot. Yeah, why not? CTF21 rootme.org just to see if the service is actually running. Yes. So we could brute, brute force the password, but we don't know the username. We don't know anything. And generally SSH is not the first entry point that we have generally in those kinds of challenges. I think, yeah, what do we see here? It's uh, welcome to uh, and mod SQL or mod SQL, however you want to pronounce it. Mod SQL in FTP, is it using some kind of SQL to connect? Not sure, let's try to Google that. So I guess we could uh, like look for pro FTPD and then mod SQL. Uh, maybe let's exploit DB. Let's see. 
Pro, FTPD, Mod SQL, Username SQL Injection. Oh, that sounds or looks interesting. Let's see what we have here. I mean, having a SQL injection in an FTP server is kind of amusing. So I wonder if we could try it here. Pro FTPD with mod SQL. Authentication bypass exploit. Okay. So it's trying to use the user with this value. <laughs> okay. So this is a classic, cla classic SQL injection, but in the context of a FTP server. Okay, let's try with this one and see uh, what we get. So here it's trying to send this command user and the value of our username is actually this one. So we can copy this one and try to use it for our authentication. Um, so that was FTP. Yeah, that's the command. Enter, so the name, name in this case would be this one and the password is just one, okay. One, come on. Oh, it's, uh, it's not showing the password, okay. No control for command, success, okay. So, oh, service not available. Really, uh, PWD, yeah, not connected. Okay, let's retry. I guess um, we need to, yeah. So as you can see here, it's it has taken only um, the string until the white space. So I guess we need to put it between double quotes. So this is our whole uh, long username. Okay, so it seems now that the username is now taken the entire string and for the password we are going to just type one and hit enter mm. doesn't seem to work let's try once more I think it's just a copy paste error so this would be our username and one would be the password okay it doesn't work Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe we need a space after the comment. Like this. And our password would be one. And yes, I guess we logged in. So the user, this user is logged in. Perfect. PWD, we are in the root directory. If we DIR, hmm. So we have, we recognize some files, index.html and artwork.jpg. And we also have a, yeah, this is a directory. What's inside this directory? Other bunch of files, PHP files. Okay, that's interesting. So it seems that we need to do some kind of enumeration on the web server under this folder. So that's what we are going to do in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and hit ring bell to be notified when the video goes live. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.